Tuesday's MLB DFS slate is one that's defined by putting good pitchers in really tough spots and objectively bad matches. Because some of the top guys for tonight, you got Lucas Gilito, he's facing the Blue Jays. Kevin Gosman facing the White Sox. We've got Frankie Montas going up against Houston. Those are some of the guys I turn to most often in daily fantasy baseball. And those are the matchups I go to a lot of them least often. And it's a tough balance to decide, okay, how much do I value the pitcher? How much do I value the matchup? And then decide, is this guy worth it? Does he grade out better than other options on the slate? And decide, where do I rank them, all things considered? And it's a tough, tough dilemma first day for sure. So we'll break things down, let you know where I come down on these guys, and rank them all for MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to preview Tuesday's 12-game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. In Chicago for the Cubs and the Brewers, winds are out to center at 13 miles per hour. That is a bump down to pitchers and a bump up to batters in that game. Also, there is a chance of rain in Coors Field for the Rockies and the Marlins. It's also just 57 degrees with winds in from center. So take regular Coors, downgrade it a couple of pegs for the batters. Still very good because it's the park. You know, the, the outfield stays big no matter how cold it may be. I do think they'll be able to play the game despite the rain, but just keep in mind that it is not full-on Coors Field for today is still probably a spot we'll want to stack, which we'll talk about in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed for not just the solo shop, but also our PGA DFS podcast every weekday or every week. I've got that solo today. Uh, Brandon is on vacation, so all of that coming up later on today on the feed. We also have a NASCAR podcast every week, USC as well via Austin Swaim. All those podcasts in the same place. If you hit subscribe, you'll get them right as they go up and maximize your time to research after you listen, decide what you agree with, what you do not, and go from there. So just search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Also, the NBA Finals are about to heat up. You can make every game feel like Game 7 on FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Throughout the playoffs, all customers can place a no-sweat same-game parlay each week. You will get up to $20 in free bets if you don't win. FanDuel has so many ways to play, and best of all, when you do win, you'll get paid faster than a fast break. Either way, you'll get up to $20 in free bets if your same game parlay during the playoffs does not win. FanDuel Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA, must be 21 plus in select states. Refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $20 per week. Restricted supply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. We do have Eric Lauer, but he's at that Wrigley Field game with the winds blowing out. He is $10,600, the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel. Kevin Gosman is 10-2, facing off with Lucas Giolito, who is $10,000. Julio Urias is $9,800. Martin Perez, all the way up to $97. Frankie Montas against the Astros, $92. Then Adam Wainwright, Christian Javier, Noah Syndergaard, Michael Walker, and Justin Steele, also at Wrigley Field, are the others at $8,000 or higher. And like I said, it's a tough spot because of those top guys, Gosman, Giolito, Montas, and Lauer, to an extent, are the guys you feel best off from a strikeout perspective, but they're all guys in really tough spots. So that's a difficult situation. For Gosman, the matchup is different because it's a low strikeout matchup. He's facing the White Sox, and they're just 20% against righties. But I think the rest of it, the non-strikeout part of this, is enough to put Gosman at the top of the slate for tonight. The White Sox are not hitting for power against righties right now. Their active roster has a 114 ISO against righties once you account for Tim Anderson's injury. 
So it's a pretty decent spot, actually. I know it, it, it does sound tough and it is tough, but it's mostly tough for DFS due to the low strikeout nature of the White Sox versus everything else. Gosman is not pitching as well now as he was to start this year, and it's likely because he's throwing fewer sliders. It's a pitch that generates a lot of whiffs for him, but it also lets up a lot of hard contact. Gosman has scaled back on that pitch for his past five starts, and the strikeouts are down, but so is the hard contact. He's letting up just a 31% hard hit rate in that five-star sample. The strikeout rate is down, but it's still fine at 27%, and he has a 14.9% swinging strike rate. So you could say that that strikeout rate may rebound as the sample expands. Three of those starts for Gosman are on the road. One of those home games, one of the two, was against the Astros. It's a really tough spot, but Gosman had 10 strikeouts there. So I do downgrade him for DFS with his slider usage down. I do downgrade him because of the low strikeout matchup, but the rest of the profile is still great. So I will have Gosman at the top of my list tonight, despite a what I would say is a meh matchup against the White Sox here. For the second pitcher, I'm going to go Christian Javier. And that to me is a bit counter to what I usually do because I typically downgrade Houston pitchers on the road. It's a good park for strikeouts. That can juice up their numbers. And Javier is on the road tonight, but I'm still going to be high in large part because he's one of the few high strikeout guys tonight who's in a good spot. He's facing the A's. They have an 82 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster. Their ISO is just 113, 23% strikeout rate, and they don't walk that much, which should help Javier get good bang for his buck out of the batters he faces for tonight. And we've seen Javier be fully stretched out now too, because he went 96 pitches his most recent time out. That is his second straight start topping 90 pitches. And even with the increased length, Javier has still been getting strikeouts. He's actually been increasing those somehow, despite the increased length. He has a 17.6% swinging strike rate in two consecutive games. And that mark is 14% in his games with this pitch count being up. So it's still very high. Even as the pitch count has gone up, he's still getting whiffs. And that's translated to a 32% strikeout rate. If I project Javier at 92 pitches for tonight, I got him at 7.1 strikeouts. That's a pretty good number. It actually ranks second on the slate behind just Giolito. And this matchup is better than what Giolito has too. So I do downgrade Javier for being on the road. But even with that, he is one of the few aces on this slate who is in a good matchup for DFS. So I still think Javier should be our number two pitcher for tonight behind Gosman because of the matchup, because of how good he's been pitching. I think that's enough to put Javier number two for tonight. Now, Javier is a value play here. He's $8,700, which means the board is open for our third pitcher on the slate. And to me, it does come down to Giolito and Frankie Montas. Both those guys are in rough matchups. Giolito is facing the Jays. Montas is against the Astros. I am going to give the edge to Montas here by just a bit. And the Astros are tough, to be sure. And I got burned by using a pitcher against them just a few weeks ago. But I think Montas is good enough to still be in play despite this spot. We're up to 10 starts on Montas this year. He has a 2.97 skill interactive ERA with a 29% strikeout rate. His fly ball rate allowed is 33%, and those are great numbers all around. It has led to some huge spike individual games. Montas has double-digit strikeouts in two of the past three games, and the one game he did not get there, he left because of a hand injury in the second inning. But one of those games, the big games, came against the Angels. And they're the best team in the league in WRC plus against righties. The Astros rank ninth. So they're very good, but not quite the Angels. The Angels do strike out a lot more than the Astros. So it's not a straight comparison, not a one-to-one spot here. But Montas has shown he can shut down super tough competition. That game was at home, as was the Rangers game. But he's there tonight, too. The Astros have not seen Montas yet this year, so there are no familiarity issues here. So I like it despite the issues. It would be one thing if Montas were projecting to be the chalk pitcher for tonight. I don't think that'll be the case. You know, if he were chalk, you'd be able to avoid him, but I don't think that'll be the case here against such a good team. I've got Montas projected for seven strikeouts tonight. Again, that ranks third behind Giolito and Javier. That's good enough for me. So I'll be high on him and hope that others will not. So I think overall that game 
A's and Astros, really good spot for pitching for DFS. Um, it is a bit warmer in Oakland today than usual, but still to 67 degrees. So not a spot we have to avoid, but just worth noting that the temperature there is up a bit. But I think to me, it's Gosman one, Javier two, Montas number three, Giolito four. We'll talk about him in things to watch later on. Before that, though, let's talk about the stacks. And I mentioned that Coors Field is not full Coors Field, but I think there's still enough there to like the Rockies for tonight. I don't want to stack the Marlins against Herman Marquez, given the, I mean, they've been playing pretty poorly offensively, but also I just think that it's a, not a good enough situation in terms of the weather to justify stacking against Marquez. But against with the Rockies facing Edward Cabrera, I could do that for sure. Now, Cabrera not officially announced the starter yet for the Marlins, uh, but Craig Mish of SportsGrid has said that Cabrera will likely be the starter. So I trust Craig. I'll go based on his word and outline what I would do here, assuming Cabrera is a starter. Cabrera did struggle in a short stint last year in the majors. He had a 5.31 skill interactive ERA, mostly due to a ton of walks. It doesn't seem like he's fixed that issue yet because he's made five starts in AAA. His walk rate there is 12%, and that's led to a 4.56 ERA despite a very good strikeout rate. And we saw this with Cabrera last year too, where he had a 37% strikeout rate in AAA. When he got promoted, that dipped down to 23% in the majors. His strikeout rate in AAA this year, 32%, so actually down from where it was last year. His swing and strike rate is down as well. And he did struggle with hard contact last year too, a 48% hard hit rate allowed. So I would expect Cabrera to get some ground balls and we do want more balls in play than what he allows. The walk rate can be kind of annoying because it suppresses balls in play. But it's Coors Field, and I'm more willing to stack in perfect situations in that spot, and I'm okay with that here. So the Rockies will be firmly in play at home for me for tonight. Of the guys high in the order for the Rockies, Jonathan Daza will probably be the lowest priority for me. I can't say I won't use him because it is Coors Field, but doesn't have the best upside. He's had He had, entering last night, zero extra base hits against righties this entire year. He had a pinch hit double last night against the righty, so that stat is no longer true. Uh, but one extra base hit still, no stolen bases. I will likely use him because it's Coors Field. And he's very low salaried, but you know, even if we get like Sam Hilliard lower in the order, I prefer, prioritize him over Daza, despite the fact that Daza will be batting second. Hilliard probably sixth or seventh if he plays. Garrett Hampson, if he plays, I'd consider above Daza as well. Some power, some stolen base upside. Again, Daza did just hit for an extra base hit last night against a righty. So maybe this will uh, wind up looking stupid and I will use him, but he will be lower on my prioritization list than a lot of the other Rockies in this spot. As far as the second, second stack goes, this one is good for weather because it is 95 degrees in Arizona and they're going to keep the roof open for today. So we want to stack here. I think we can do so with the Braves. They're facing Humberto Castellanos, who I've been stacking against for a while now, and I keep thinking that it's not going to work because he does some things pretty well. But the results have been poor for a while now, and he's facing the Braves tonight, so I think we should stack the Braves here. Castellanos just really struggles to get strikeouts. He has a 16% strikeout rate this year, and I think he knows that because he's been th starting to throw more sliders across his past four starts. For him, it's a it's a low whiff pitch, despite the fact typically it's more of a high whiff pitch. But I think that you know we might see this this strikeout number continue to be low, despite leaning on what in theory should be a higher strikeout pitch. The strikeout rate for Castellanos in this four star sample is seventeen percent. It's coming with a forty one percent fly ball rate with a thirty nine percent hard hit rate. The results that swung against him too. He let up six runs to the Dodgers last time out. He's let up. Six home runs across those four starts. He's now facing uh, the Braves, who have a 40% fly ball right against righties. It's a great environment for hitting for tonight. So the Braves, to me, very much a priority stack, given all the factors lining up for them. And I think this is a good spot to start buying into Matt Olson. His salary is $3,400, but he still has a 207 ISO against righties. The strikeout rate, manageable, just hasn't been lofting in the ball as much. But his launch angle is 14 degrees across the past two weeks versus 10 degrees for the full season. So he is still putting it on the ground more than I'd like, but I think he's trending the right way. So I'd expect the dingers to come eventually. He's only got, I think, five so far this year. But I, I think that it's a good time to get in on Olsen now while the salary is doable at 34. 
I think to me, it's a good time to buy. So to me, Matt Olson, really good option for DFS for tonight and a good option going forward in decent spots, just because I'd expect the power to increase as we get further into the year. There are a couple other spots where we don't know the starter yet, and I'll touch on those in things to watch. But among the spots we do know the situation, I think the Mets need to be next for stacking. They're facing Patrick Corbin, who is still really struggling, though there have been some more bright spots recently. He's been going to more uh, sinkers and fewer four-seamers of late. And that's helped his fly ball rate go down to 30% across his past six starts. That's calmed things down for him. He did hold this same Mets team scoreless across five innings in one of those starts, but the broader sample and the peripherals are still concerning because in that time, that six start sample, the ERA for Corbin is 4.46. He's let up five earned runs in two of those starts. He let up three in two other starts. He let up three home runs in one of the two, one of the starts and they let up two in another. And that's because he's still letting up a lot of hard contact. So he's getting ground balls, but the hard contact is still there. So when they do lock the ball, it's going pretty far. His hard hit rate is 50% in that time. And his strikeout rate is still to 17%. So it's getting better for Corbin, but it's still definitely not great. I think the Mets are good enough to take advantage of that. And it's super hot in New York for today, which, which bumps up batters for sure. So I think it's enough to make the Mets a really good stack here. I talked a couple weeks ago about how I was pretty much out on Eduardo Escobar He was really struggling, and that's not been as true against lefties as righties because his ISO against lefties is 250, small sample, but a lot of fly balls, as you've come to expect from Escobar. He's been getting a couple more barrels the past two weeks. He's $2,400. I will be in on Escobar here. I think that's worth highlighting because I've been lower on him so far this year, but I think in this spot against the lefty who's really struggling, I will buy back into Eduardo Escobar for tonight. Let's move now to things to watch. I do think Giolito deserves to be in your player pool. I don't always get to four pitchers in my player pool, but I think I will for tonight. Giolito has a 33% strikeout rate this year. And as mentioned, that's tops in the slate for me, his strikeout, his strikeout projection. But he lets up a lot of hard contact. The Jays can be feisty in that arena. Giolito's on the road. And those downsides are enough to put him fourth on my list. But I think I will get to four here. So Giolito, to me, is fourth. And I don't typically get to four pitchers, but I think I will for tonight. Just because I think all four have a really good shot to be the number one pitcher for tonight. The two spots where we don't know the starters yet are the Orioles and the Pirates. The Orioles are facing the Mariners. I'm guessing it'll be a bullpen game. Definitely not a bullpen we need to avoid. They do have two lefties in the bullpen and Keegan Aiken and uh, Siono Perez. Aiken is on two days refs after he threw 46 pitches. So probably available, but, but not definitively. So I try to look for guys who can hit both lefties and righties. If you decide to stack the Mariners here, and I'm okay with them for sure. Um, but just try to get guys who are good against both lefties and righties. Finally, I bet the Dodgers are facing Mitch Keller potentially after an opener for the Pirates. Keller's been better than his results this year. But he's still a low strikeout guy, not enough fly balls, not a ton of hard contact, uh, or he's letting up enough fly balls for us to stack against him and enough hard contact. But Keller's specifically doing a good good job against lefties. The numbers against righties are not as impressive. So I'd bump up the righties if you go to the Dodgers here and would feel pretty good about them, assuming that Keller is a starter for today. But check back on starters for the Orioles and for the Pirates to see if it is indeed a bullpen game, and Keller for the Pirates. Let's finish up here with our dinger calls, and it's a couple of guys we touched on during the stacking section. For the boring one, Matt Olson. I think that, again, the homers will come, starting to get more loft in the ball recently, still hitting for some power, really good spot for hitting for tonight with the temperature what it is, so Matt Olson, the boring home run call. The fun one, I will go Eduardo Escobar, big fly ball guy playing in a park that is also super hot for tonight. We want to target warm weather for batting. We get that with both Olsen and Escobar. So to me, home run calls for tonight, Matt Olson and Eduardo Escobar. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. But as I mentioned, we are back once again later on today to preview this week's PGA tournament. It is the Memorial Tournament. We'll break down uh, my favorite golfers in each salary tier and get you set for that one over on FanDuel.com. Get that by subscribing to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. 
If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sanis, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. I hope you all had fantastic weekends. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.